सो हेलो गाइज एंड वेलकम टू द अनादर वीडियो ऑफ टी सी एस एन क्यू टी डी एस ए राउंड प्ले लिस्ट इफ यू आर अन अवेयर दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड द प्ले लिस्ट ऑन डी एस ए राउंड फॉर टी सी एस एन क्यू टी एग्जाम डू चेक द प्ले लिस्ट एंड इफ यू आर न्यू टू अवर चैनल डोंट फर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू गेट द बेस्ट रिसोर्सेज टू प्रिपेयर फॉर योर टी सी एस एन क्यू टी सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वट डज अ टूडेज क्वेश्चन सेज दैट द टूडेज क्वेश्चन इज ऑल्सो नॉर्मल वन सो वट डज क्वेश्चन सेज दैट वी हैव टू रिटर्न ऑल द रिपीटिंग एलिमेंट्स वी हैव टू रिटर्न ऑल द रिपीटिंग एलिमेंट्स विच मीन्स इवन इफ अ सिंगल एलिमेंट ऑकर्स टू और मोर दैन टू टाइम्स वी हैव टू रिटर्न इट फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी द वन हैज ऑकर्ड फॉर थ्री टाइम्स सो वी हैव टू प्रिंट वन टू हैज ऑकर्ड ओनली फॉर वन टाइम्स वी विल नॉट प्रिंट द टू बिकॉज वॉट वी वॉन्ट वी वॉन्ट रिपीटिंग एलिमेंट वी डोंट वॉन्ट element which has occurred for one time we want the element which has occurred for more than two or more than two okay so we will not print two we have already printed one so now we have to ignore one three three is occurred for two times so again we will print three and the four has also occurred for two times so our answer will be one three four and these are the repeating elements and this is what we need to print it right so i hope so you understood the question now let's try to get uh, what will be the brute force solution for this now what we need to do is we need to find out repeating elements which means i am standing at 1 and i will check is there any one present to the right of it to the right of it y yes one has occurred for one time right so we will print one because if any number right let me write it if any number occurs Two or more than two times, we will simply print it. Simply print it, right? For example, one one has occurred two times, so simply print one. Four has occurred for two times, simply print four. Two has occurred only for one time, so don't print it. We have already done with one. Four we have already done. Three it is only one time, so no need to print. Six has occurred. Two times, so simply print six. Seven has occurred only one time, so ignore it. Eight has occurred only for one time, so ignore it. Right. So what will be the brute force solution for this? What will be the brute force solution for this? So what I will do is I will simply keep a loop. I will simply keep a loop. I will start from i equals to zero and I will go till n and I will simply do i plus plus. What I will do is I will simply do i plus plus. And what I will do is what I will do is I will simply keep another loop because what I am doing is, if I am standing at here, let's suppose if my i is standing at here, I will start from i plus one till last, and I will check for how many times the one has already occurred. For how many times one has already occurred? I will come here. Is it one? No. One? No. One? Yes, it is one. Is it one? 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 No. So we have occurred two times. So simply I will print one because it has occurred for more than two or more than two times. Then I come at four. Right, so now my I will start at four. I will start from I plus one, that is two, and I will keep on going to the right side to check the how many times the four has occurred. So it has occurred zero times, zero times again. It occurs two times now. No, 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 no. Right, so this is what we will do. So what I will do is what I will do is I will simply keep the counter which is initialized to zero. This counter is basically used to count the occurrence of that element for how many times that element has occurred. Now what I will do is. I will simply run another loop that is for loop, which will start from i plus one, and it will go till n, and I'll simply do j plus plus. Now, what I will do is I will check if if my a of i is equal equal to a of j, then what I will do is I will simply increment my counter, and I will also mark that element as minus one as minus one. Now. I will tell you why I have marked this element to the minus one. Let me tell you why I have marked this element as minus one. Okay, but before that, before I tell you why I have marked that element as minus one, let's print something, right? So we, what we want, we need element which occurs two or more than two. So when can I print this? When can I print this? If, if my when I, if my counter, right, is greater than or equal to two, simply I can print a of i. Simply, I can print a of i. Now, let me tell you why I have marked that element as minus one. So, let's suppose I am starting at this position, right? So, this is my i and this is my j. I will check. Is are you equal to one? You said no. Are you equal to one? No. Are you equal to one? Yes. 
I am I am equal to one. Now let's suppose I haven't marked this to minus one. I haven't marked this to minus one. Then what will happen? What will happen? I will come here. I will come here again. You will come here, right? Again, you will consider this one. Now let's suppose if in case if it also contains one, then what will happen? One will get printed for two times. One will get printed for two times. One for this one because I can see it has occurred for three times. And again, you will come at here, and I can see the one has occurred for two times. So the one will be get printed for two times. In order to avoid this, what I will do is I will simply mark it to minus one and minus one, so that if I am standing at minus one, I can simply ignore that element. So what again I do is one special condition I can have if my a of i is equal equal to minus one, then I don't want that element. Simply go on continuing it, which means if I am coming here at minus one. I don't need to check how many times minus one has occurred to the right, because what does minus one indicates? It simply indicates we have already taken that element. We have already taken that element. So don't check for this element. Simply go ahead. Simply go ahead. So this was the brute force solution to find out the repeating elements. Now, what will be the total time complexity for this? By default, this loop will run for n times, and in worst case, this loop will also run for n times. So what will be the total time complexity? It would be b of n cross e n will be my time complexity. So will this code be accepted? Of course no, right? It will give us a time limit exceeded. So let's check out the optimal solution to do this in better way. Now, what is the optimal solution we can get? Every time what we were doing is every time, right? For this one, we are running the loop from one to end, that is start to end. I came at four again. I'm running from two to nine. I came at two again. I'm running from two to nine. I have already checked this element, right? Then again, why I'm checking this? Again, why I'm doing this? Because I have already checked this element, and again I'm checking the same number of elements. Again, I'm checking the same number of elements. So, in order to avoid this, we will be using one data structure, which we call it as a set. What we will do is we'll use it call it as a set. So, what I will do is I'll simply create a set. So, this is our set, right? Now, what I will do is I will simply go at this one. Now, I will check. Hey, set, is there any one present in you? Is there any one present in you? You said no. Okay, then simply insert one. Okay, go to the next position. You are at four. Now, you will check. Hey, set, is there any four present in you? You said no. Okay, simply insert four. Go ahead. I will check. Hey, set, is there any two present in you? You said no. So simply insert two. Now observe carefully. Now observe carefully. I came at one. I came at one. Now what I will do is I will check. Hey, set, is there any one present in you? Is there any one present in you? You said yes. So what I will do is I will simply print one. I will simply print one. And and what I will do is I will remove this one. I will remove this one. And I will not insert this one. I will not insert this one in my set. Why? Because let's suppose if in case if it also has a one. Then again, what will happen if my set contains one? I came at here. Is there any one present? You said yes. So again, you will print the one. So two times the one is getting printed, but the one should get printed only for one time, right? The one should get printed only for one time. Therefore, whenever I found the element present in my set, whenever I found the element present in my set, first thing I will do is simply remove that element from the set and don't push this element in my set. I will push the element only if. My set does not contain that element. Okay, now I came at four. Is there any four present in my set? You said yes, four is present. So what I will do is simply print four and remove from my set. Don't push into my set. Don't push into my set. So now go ahead. Three. Are you present in my set? You said no. So simply put it. Then go next. I am at six. Six. Are you present in my set? You said no. Again I came at seven. Are you present in my set? You said no. Eight. Are you present in my set? You said no. Six. Are you present in my set? Yes. Six is present. So simply print six. Remove this six from my set and don't push this. Now you are completely out of the array. And exactly we got the answer, which are the repeating elements, right? Which are the repeating elements. Now what will be the total time complexity for this? By default we are traversing the whole array. So what will be the total time complexity? B go of n. B go of n. And at the same time, we are inserting and removing the elements from the set. The best case will be big of n into big of one, or the maximum it can go till big of log n. Sorry, right. So this will be the time complexity. 
either this or either this depending upon the kind of data structure or the hash set which you are using right so this was the most easiest problem now what i will do is i will simply write a pseudo code for this which can be understood for the both c++ and java and at the end we will check out the java code as well as the c++ code so let's define the set and here i will simply put the data type and have this in java we can have the hash set right so we have the hash set in java the same thing we can do in java as well so let's define a set now what i will do is i'll simply run a loop i'll simply run a loop all right now i will check if my set contains the elements right if my set contains that element then what i will do is what i will do is simply print that element simply print that element and once you print it remove from set remove from that that element from the set and if that element is not present in your set then and then only add in your set then and then only add in your set so this was the most easiest problem to find the repeating elements in my array now see this will take big of n time and this and this it will be take big of log n times or in best case we can have big of one time depending upon the which set we are using whether the hash set tree set or another set right so now i hope so you understood the explanation part of this program now let's move on to the id and check what will be the c++ and the java code for this so this is a simple java code i wrote first of all i simply declared my set which is the hash set then i simply traverse my array and i checked if my element is present in my set if it is i simply print that element because it simply indicates that we have got the repeating element and i simply removed that element from my set as well and if i haven't found that element present inside my set i simply insert it into my set right so this was the easiest problem as we discussed on the ipad so this is the sm small implementation in java now let's look at what will be the implementation in c++ so this is the c++ implementation again the same thing i did i simply declared the set i am traversing my array and i will check if that element is present in my set if it is i will simply print that element and then i will remove it from my set to avoid the further clashes and if that element is not present in my set i will simply insert that element in so inside my set so this was a small implementation in c++ so i hope so you understood the explanation part and the coding part of this problem just in case if you are new to our channel do subscribe the channel for more such informative videos and to be a placement ready person till then see you in the next video